The first test flight of Elon Musk's Starship took place on July 25, 2019, and it was ready for space travel at that time. However, he has since raised his own standards and developed a significantly more advanced Starship by utilizing nuclear technology. We may be getting closer to the age of nuclear-powered space travel, but there must be a reason behind Elon's constant technological improvement, and we believe that reason is a lack of restrictions that are imposed by the technology that is currently available. In a myriad of different ways, ever since the dawn of civilization, humans have always been fascinated by the stars in the sky above them. In the astrophysics of the parts of the cosmos that are extremely remote from our solar system, there seems to be an especially potent source of mystery. Hey intellectuals, welcome back to the future space. In this video, we are going to talk about Elon Musk's nuclear rocket, so make sure to watch the video till the end. The reason for this is that numerous new scientific studies are being carried out all over the world by various space agencies. Even though economically practical results have not yet been demonstrated, there is a pressing need to develop new propulsion technologies that make it possible to achieve significantly higher velocities than are currently possible. Nuclear fusion is one of the most promising options for launching autonomous probes to the nearest stars during the lifetime of a human being. However, the most significant barrier to interstellar travel is a lack of appropriate technology. The distance between us and the stars is the primary obstacle we must overcome in order to arrive there. It is a very long way to Proxima Centauri. To help you comprehend the insanity of the distance between us, you are located 269,000 astronomical units away. It is common knowledge that one astronomical unit is equivalent to the typical distance, approximately 150,000 kilometers, that separates Earth and the Sun. Pluto is the most distant dwarf planet in our solar system, and it orbits the Sun at a distance of approximately 40 astronomical units. The Sun is nearly 7,000 times further away than Pluto. Keeping this information in mind, how long do you think it will take to get to Proxima? If you traveled at the speed of light, it would take you four years to get there according to a scientist who works for NASA. Because this one is relatively close, it is just a hair more than four light years away. However, if you were able to travel on a light beam, it would only take you four years to get there. The Voyager 1 probe, which was sent into space in 1977 to investigate Jupiter and Saturn, holds the record for the fastest spacecraft ever built by humans. It was able to flee the solar system in 2012, and its current speed is 17 kilometers per second which translates to 3.7 astronomical units per year. It would take approximately 74,000 years for Voyager 1 to reach Proxima if it continued on its current course, which is an inhumanely long amount of time for a researcher to wait for their results. The value of the space probe is undoubtedly dependent on its capability to return data in a time frame suitable for humans, such as decades or even a century. But Musk does not plan on traveling such great distances in the foreseeable future. The sole purpose of all of his efforts to leave this planet is to begin a new life on another. Mars, as you probably guessed it to be, making a home on Mars Elon Musk is determined to get humans off the planet, which is more important than ever, given the fact that humanity is facing climate change, asteroid attacks, declining fertility rates, and in his words, good old nuclear Armageddon. Elon Musk is determined to get humans off the planet. During the meeting of the National Academies that took place on November 27, 2021, Elon Musk shared his thoughts on his plans to establish a permanent presence on the planet Mars. The situation with Elon is not complicated. When asked about the likelihood of him traveling to Mars, he responded that it was possible that by the time the next massive asteroid arrives, we will have perfected the technology necessary to safeguard the Earth or deflect the space rock. The percentage that Musk gave was 70%. What are the chances of you actually traveling to Mars in the foreseeable future? 70% of us have made a number of breakthroughs in recent times, and I couldn't be more excited about them. On the other hand, if something even more catastrophic takes place, like a nearby star exploding, then it's possible that none of us will survive. That is, without a doubt, the spacecraft. The magnificent spacecraft. The financial repercussions were mind-boggling even before Musk revealed the new starship that he had been working on. In spite of its size and power, the rocket system is more cost-effective than the Falcon 9 due to the fact that it is constructed in a reusable manner. Musk has disclosed that the cost of launching starships could be as low as $2 million, whereas the cost of launching a Falcon 9 is $62 million. Imagine a brand new, much larger, and significantly more potent nuclear starship. There is no way around the fact that the Starship 2.0 is a massive vessel. Musk asserts that it is anywhere from two to eight times larger than the existing model. 
he has indicated that the Starship 2.0 will have a diameter of 18 meters, which is more than twice as large as the one that his company is currently working on, which has a diameter of 9 meters. Musk is unhappy with the reduction and would like to see it increased instead. Before being scaled down, the diameter of the Starship was originally planned to be 12 meters. Given that Musk is reportedly unhappy with the reduction in size, it is likely that he wants to make it even bigger. The Starship spaceship itself will be powered by nine of these engines. Reusability was a primary design goal for not only the Raptor 2, but also the Starship and the Super Heavy ships. The Raptor 2 engine is the culmination of several years' worth of development work that SpaceX has put into its Raptor engines. Its architecture is less complicated than that of SpaceX's first Raptor, with fewer complicated tubing and plumbing mechanisms than its predecessor. In addition to this, we can see Musk beaming with pride as he demonstrates the power of his new engines. In a tweet, he said that they should wrap the two rocket engines at Starbase, each of which produces more than 500,000 pounds of force. The Raptor 2 engines are incredible in and of themselves, but in order to reduce the amount of time and money spent traveling, we need to switch to nuclear travel, and the process for doing so is as follows. Nuclear space travel in the 1960s, NASA and the Atomic Energy Commission, which is now known as the U.S. Department of Energy, worked together on a project. The program was terminated in 1972. But research on the fundamental design components and gases used in NTP reactors continued after that. The operation of an NTP system involves sending a fuel propellant, which is typically hydrogen, through a reactor core. In this core, uranium atoms are split apart in order to generate heat through the process of fission. Traditional rocket launchers don't hold a candle to the power and efficiency of the NTP launchers. Impulse was the unit of measurement used to determine how much potential power could be extracted from a given amount of fuel. A chemical rocket that runs on the burning of liquid hydrogen and oxygen has a specific impulse of 400 seconds. This is equal to half the fueling economy of the first objective for uranium rockets which is the first objective for chemical rockets. This is due to the fact that lighter gases require less effort to accelerate when biochemical rockets are being utilized. They produce vapor at a metabolic end that is significantly more dense than the hydrogen that is utilized in an NTP system. This results in increased performance and enables the rocket to travel further while consuming a significantly lower amount of fuel. There is a chance that some people will be anxious about launching a nuclear rocket because of the possibility of a catastrophe, but NTP systems are safe because they will not be tested anywhere on this planet. Alternately, each one of them will initially be propelled into orbit by conventional rockets before having their power turned on. In point of fact, these systems are not even designed to be able to produce the necessary force that is required to break through the surface of the Earth. However, it's not all unicorns and rainbows here. Concerns have been voiced regarding the availability of a dependable system for nuclear propulsion in space. Will it be built in time to make trips to Mars, carrying a full load beginning in the year 2032 and to carry out a baseline mission in 2040? Any improvements to the system's performance, reliability, life, and usefulness for a wider range of missions would only require incremental testing to certify the gains. This would be the case regardless of whether or not the improvements were made. And that's for today's video. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. Let us know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. You can also watch our other videos that have been specially selected for you. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the